Hello, I'm Pastor Timothy James Farrell, and I serve as the founding and lead pastor of a non-denominational church here in Bloomington Normal called The Tab. And I would like to invite you to join us for worship some Sunday morning at 10 a.m. The Tab is located at 1845 West Hovey Avenue in Normal, Illinois. I also want to invite you to visit our ministry website at thetab.tv. There's lots of wonderful resources and ministry there for you to take advantage of. Thank you for being with us today on this Tab Telecast. Here is this week's message. Good morning. It is so good to see everybody here today. We want to welcome you to the tab. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Boy, I tell you what, the praise team did a wonderful job leading us. Yes, put your hands together. Let them know you love them. You know, sometimes, you know, the preachers and praise teams, you know, they, they get a, they hit a single and you're happy with the single. And well, we got on base. All right. Then they hit a double. And you're doing even better than a triple. And boy, we're doing good. Sometimes they hit a home run. You know, man, we did really good today. Today, I felt like that was a grand slam. There's just nothing like a grand slam, right? And boy, I tell you what, the praise team just hit a grand slam. Thank you so much, praise team, for leading us into God's presence today. Amen. So, uh, so we're glad you're here. And, uh, and in the presence of the Lord. We want to welcome all of you that are joining us right now live via our tab telecast on Facebook and our YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us wherever you're at. Please like, love, share, comment, engage with us. Let us know you're watching us and uh, joining with us in worship here this morning. Hey, I also at this time want to dismiss the tab kids to go to tab kids ministry. God bless you. Have a wonderful time in the Lord this morning, learning about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Nothing better than teaching your kids about the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Well, hey, we have a, a very special honor here today, and that is to receive a word and a message from one of our own. And uh, Mr. Duraco Reed is going to give our message here this morning on defeating the giant of comfort. I know it's going to be a wonderful uh, message here, uh, you know, this morning. You know, uh, many years ago, matter of fact, 1988, our family, uh, mom and dad, Farrell, up here moved Pete and I from Clinton to Danville and uh, we were in Danville for almost 10 years and uh, uh, we served there at St. James United Methodist Church in Danville and uh, little did um, we know uh, but Duraco Reed also was living in Danville at the time and his father right Duraco is and was a pastor and his dad and my dad knew each other and uh, 32 years later we we're here in Bloomington Normal at the tab. God brought us together, and uh, he, he said, I'm from Danville. I'm like, you're from Danville. I'm, I'm kind of from Danville. I'm from here, there, and everywhere. But uh, uh, and we got to just talking uh, about our families and about uh, about Danville. And long story short, we figured out that that our parents knew one another. And uh, boy, we're just so grateful that God has brought uh, Duraco and Janelle and their three uh, girls to uh, to the tab. And we're so blessed. Little do you know, he's a drummer. I tell you what, uh, doesn't he do a great job behind the set back there? Oh. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Hallelujah. But he also has a calling on his life to share God's word. And, and uh, I just felt like, you know what, uh, it would be a great time to uh, have him share what God has placed on his heart in regards to defeating this giant, the giant of comfort. Uh, by definition, just real quick before I hand him the mic, uh, we've been defining the giant, what a giant is specifically. Uh, is something or someone who tries to intimidate, to scare, and to paralyze us in order to keep us and prohibit us from living the abundant and victorious life that God has called and really desires for all of us to live. And so we've been looking at this uh, in this series, Defeating Your Giants, a couple of different giants. We could probably turn this series into a, a year-long message series. There's probably at least 52 giants we could probably talk on. We're just going to cover four uh, in the month of April. We looked at uh, the first Sunday of this month 
month, defeating the giant of death. And Jesus slam dunked the, de the giant of death when he was resurrected, amen, from the grave. And we sang about that here this morning. Last Sunday, we discovered uh, through faith in Jesus, we can defeat the giant of fear. If you missed that message, it's archived for you on our YouTube channel. And one kind of interesting giant uh, we're going to defeat today with Duraco's help uh, is the giant of comfort. I don't know about you, but I think probably most Americans, uh, we, we're, we're battling this giant. We just get too comfortable. Amen. And so, uh, so would you please put your hands together and welcome Duraco Reed. Come on up here, Duraco. God bless you. There you go. Brother. First, I want to thank Pastor Tim for uh, allowing me to preach today. Uh, this has been a long time uh, coming to be able to preach in um, Bloomington Normal. So this is uh, definitely a dream for me. All right. Now, how many people watched the movie Rocky Three? All right, there you go. All right. Now, who didn't, who haven't watched Rocky, in this movie, Rocky was a boxer. And he, he used to go to the ring, and he would fight for prize money. But when Rocky won, Rock, Rocky was like, like a poor man. He had to work hard for everything he earned. I mean, he had to work hard. And when he went to the ring, he took that same mindset with him to the ring. And so when you knew you was facing Rocky, you knew you was in for a fight because you knew he was going to fight hard. But by the time Rocky got to Rocky III, he became rich and famous because he, he, he became the heavyweight champion of the world. And so when he became the heavyweight champion of the world, he became rich and famous. By him being rich and famous, he became overconfident and lazy. See, Rocky wasn't doing the same things that he was doing before he became the heavyweight champion of the world. And so since he became rich, rich and famous and, and overconfident and lazy, that became his new comfort zone because he, be, because he became the heavyweight champion of the world. Now, this morning, I'm going to preach about being comfortable in your comfort zone. Now, don't get me wrong. All comfort zone is not bad. Say, say for example, you've been in an abusive relationship or, or uh, a you know, mentally and physically ab abusive relationship, and somebody or somebody or you got yourself out of that relationship, that's a good comfort zone because you're not in that relationship anymore. Now, just say, just say if, if um, you, was, you, know, you, was, you was overconfident, you was lazy, uh, you, you was uh, anger can be a comfort zone. Fear can be a comfort zone. And with those, that can be a comfort zone, a comfort zone you don't want. Now, I'm going to read this morning, 1 Samuel chapter 17, 17 to uh, 25th verse. All right. Now Jesse said to his son David, take this Ehav of roasted grain and these 10 loaves of bread for your brothers and hurry to their camp. Take along these 10 cheeses to the commander of their unit. See your brothers are and bring back some insurance from them. They are with Saul and all the men of Israel in the Valley of Elah fighting against the Philistines. Early in the morning, David left the flock in care of a shepherd. Loaded, uh, loaded up and set out as Jesse has directed. He reached the camp as the army was going out to the battle of uh, position, shouting a war cry. Israel, the Philistines, was drawing up their lines facing each other. David left his things with the keeper of supplies, ran to the battle lines and asked his brothers how they were. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion of Gath, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance, and David heard it. And whenever the Israelites saw the man, they all fled from him in great fear. Now the Israelites have been saying, do you see how this man keeps coming out? He comes out and he defied Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who will kill him. They're talking about Goliath. And he will also give him the, his daughter in marriage and will exempt his family from paying taxes in Israel. Now, living in your comfort zone, it can become your identity. If you're comfortable in your comfort zone, it definitely can become your identity. Let me, let me give you a good example. I knew this one, this one guy who I grew up with. 
and and in his in his home he had a hard life. He witnessed a lot of bad things. A lot of bad things happened to him. So since these things happened, that's all he knew. That's all he seen, and that's all he understood. So that life that he he was growing up in became his comfort zone. He found himself doing the exact same thing that he was taught. And even if you put him in a better situation, his mindset will still be on his comfort zone. Kind of like Egypt, when God brought Egypt, uh, uh, Egypt uh, I mean Israel out of Egypt. What was their mindset? Every time something bad happened, I wish we were still in Egypt. At least we had bread to eat. At least we had water to drink. Even though they were getting treated like slaves, but every time something bad, their mindset was on Egypt. They, had, they got comfortable in their comfort zone. And this was what happened with this young man. Now, this also reminded me, I, I can relate to this. I remember when I was young and I just started playing the drums. And, and, you know, I, I played, I practiced, I practiced, and I finally got the confidence to play in, in front of, you know, in front of a lot of people. So I was at my father's church, and, and I remember playing and how the, some, some members treated me when I played. Oh, you no good. You, 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 you playing too loud. You, you need to get better. And I kept hearing this over and over again. So what did I do? I entered in my comfort zone. And I was like, you know what? Since they don't want me to play, I'm not going to play. See, my comfort zone protected me from dealing with them. So I was like, I can't deal with this anymore. So I'm done dealing with this. So I'm going to enter my comfort zone. I'm going to enter my security blanket, and it's going to protect me. And I remember 30, 35 years later, uh, God finally blessed me with some drums. And I, I got them in my basement, and I would go down and I would play, you know, just for fun. And I remember my wife came down. She said, maybe you need to play for the church. And I, and, and, and I looked at I looked at Janelle, I was like, Jan, I was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm never going to play again. Because see, see, for me, it brought back the memory when I was younger. All I can think about, if I play again, that exact same thing is going to happen to me. And I can't deal with that. So my comfort zone was protecting me. And I remember God was just chipping on me. He's like, hey, son, I need you to go play. And I was like, God, you don't understand. You, you don't know what happened to me when I was younger. You, I like, I know you was there, but you don't understand. And God was like, I, I, I understand, but I need you to go play. And he kept chipping on me, kept working on me. And finally, the light bulb came up out, and you know, I said, I'm going to play. And I went down on, on uh, down the stairs in the basement. And I just started playing for real. And I was I would listen to YouTube dramas on YouTube, and, and I just listen to songs. I'll play them songs. And now I sit here today, playing drums at the tab. Amen. And 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 I and, and main thing I had to step out of my comfort zone, and I had to deal with that pain and hurt that I went through when I was young. That was the only way that I was going to be able to play. Now. Being in your comfort zone, I need y'all to listen to this, can stop you from being who you're supposed to be. Just like me, if I, like I, I, my comfort zone stopped me from playing the drums. It stopped me from being who I was supposed to be. Say, say if some of y'all wanted to be a lawyer or a doctor, and, and you know you have to put your time in, you gotta study, and, and you gotta put extra time in, but if you wasn't doing those things, and then all of a sudden you get your grade and they tell you, you can't do this program. See, by, by being lazy and not doing what you're supposed to do, stop you from being who you were supposed to be. That's what your comfort zone can do. It can stop you. This reminds me of, of, of the soldiers of Israel. How for 40 days, Goliath would come out and he would shout, which one of y'all Israelites bad enough to fight me? Which one of y'all man enough to fight me? Which one of y'all tough enough to fight me? And for 40 days, not one soldier will fight them. Just think about this. Just say there was 10,000 Israelite soldiers, and Goliath stepped out, and not one of them will fight him. Uh, if, if you go back to verse 24, they said, whenever the Israelites saw this man, talking about Goliath, they all fled from him in great fear. One man made a bunch of soldiers flee, flee from great fear. One man. Not another 10,000 soldiers, just one man made them, made them flee. flee. And, and, uh, um, and while, they was, while they fleeing, went back to camp. Now, this is the crazy part about it. Now, 
if you go back to verse 25 and it say, now the Israelites have been saying, do you see this man keep coming out? They talking about Goliath. He comes out and he defy Israel. Now, now they want to act tough since they in front of Goliath. Now they want to say, I can't believe this man is a fine Israel. What's, what's he, he don't know who we are. What's his problem? This remind me of, of, of say, say like it was a husband. He was out with his friends at, at the bar watching a football game. And, and the phone rings. And he answered his wife. And his wife said, you need to come home. <laughs> and then he, he get back to his friends. His friends say, uh, Yo, your wife says you had to come home. No, man. I told that woman, I'm going to come home when I'm ready to come home. I, I'm the man of the house. I wear the pants. But knowing he wasn't going to say that when he got home. Because she's the Goliath in that family. That's, that's what they doing. Now they want to act tough. They, they ain't saying that in front of Goliath. But they saying that at, at, at the camp and by themselves. Because they, you know, they don't want to like they, they afraid in front of their other uh, soldiers. Now... Now, the problem is, with this one, uh, the king, King Saul, he offered great wealth, offered his daughter in marriage. Then he also offered, uh, exempt his family from paying taxes to Israel. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You gonna offer me great wealth? <laughs> then you gonna, I'm gonna get to marry your daughter? And then on top of that, I get to keep the money that I earn? I don't have to pay taxes? Sign me up. But what, who, who, who do I got to fight? But the Israelite soldiers was like, even that wouldn't let them, make them go out there and fight. I mean, this is how afraid they was of, of Goliath. Great wealth, um, uh, get the marriage, uh, Saul darted, and, and uh, pay taxes, don't pay taxes. Even that would not, uh, they still wouldn't go out there and fight Goliath. And how, how do we how we know that? Because they ran in great fear. Now, the problem was the soldiers was looking at the appearance of, of Goliath. Goliath stood still, you know, stood about nine, ten feet. That's that's tall. I'm six feet and he got another, you know, four feet on top of me. That's tall. And and the army Goliath had he wore was about a, over a hundred pounds. That's that's a lot. The, the the sword and the spear that he had weighed fifteen pounds each. How in the world you expect me to go fight a guy wearing over 100 pounds of armor? How you gonna expect me to go fight a guy who, who his sword and his spear weigh 15 pounds each? Saul, King Saul, is you crazy? You expect me to go out there and fight him? That's kind of remind me of Mike Tyson. Y'all remember Mike Tyson back in the days, the fighter? And his opponent, when they used to walk, walk to the ring, they walked to the ring with fear. They was already defeated before they even got in the boxing ring. And this was Goliath doing them. He already defeating the uh, uh, Israel soldiers before they even fight. The Israel soldiers' comfort zone was fear. And that, in that fear, they lived a comfortable life. In that fear, they stayed alive. In that fear, they ate good every day for 40 days. In that fear, they drank good every day for 40 days. That fear was their comfort zone. It was a security blanket. It kept them from being killed by Goliath. I don't know how many times I said this. I rather, let me explain this to you. I would rather live in my comfort zone than deal with what I'm supposed to deal with. I would rather live in my comfort zone than be who I'm supposed to be in my life. The Israelite soldiers would rather live in fear their comfort zone than earn great wealth, marry King Saul's daughter, and exempt from paying taxes. I would rather be in my fear. No matter, King Saul, what you offer me. No matter if you offer me great wealth. It don't matter if you offer me to marry your daughter. It doesn't matter if you offer me a exempt from taxes. I would rather live in my comfort zone. That would kind of remind me of um, Esau and Jacob. When, when, when uh, Jacob came out from the, um, Esau came out from the field, he was tired, working all day. And he went to Jacob and he said, give me something to eat. 
He said, I'm tired, I'm hungry, and I feel like I'm about to die. And Jacob said, I will give you something to eat only if you give me your birthright. What did, what did uh, Esau do? I would rather eat today than worry about my birthright tomorrow. Me eating today is more important than my birthright. I would rather. I don't know how many times I said that in my life. Now, the question I want to ask, where is King Saul? Is King Saul supposed to be the leader of the Israel, Israel soldiers? Is he supposed to be the king? Is he supposed to lead the army out in battle? Was he the tallest among the men? Was he, was he the uh, great warrior? Was he the first king? Where was King Esau? I mean, King Saul. I know where he was at. He was in his comfort zone called fear. How do we know that? He offered the other soldiers great wealth. I, you get to marry my daughter and exempt from taxes. That's how we know he was in fear. Because King Saul would rather be comfortable in his, his, his fear than go out there and fight Goliath. That's why he offered the soldiers. And, and not one soldier wouldn't go out there and fight. Now, being comfortable, being comfortable in your zone, in your comfort zone, it keeps you from being ridiculed. Being comfortable in your comfort zone keep you from being persecuted. Being in your comfort zone keep you from being an outcast. I don't know about you, but I do know about me. I don't know how many times when I was facing persecution, I'd rather be in my comfort zone. I don't know about you, when it was time for me to face, be ridiculed, I'd rather be in my comfort zone. I don't know about you, when it was time for me to be an outcast, I would rather be in my comfort zone. Maybe that's just me. I would rather be this than be who I'm supposed to be. This will remind me of the church today. Not all churches. All churches are not like this. Some churches have the heart to fight. Some churches, how they allow the world to dictate a new normal. How the church allow the, the, uh, the world, stay, they stay on the sideline and, 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 and be silent. Not all churches. How the church would rather just go into a building and just worship and then go home. I don't know, I don't know how many times I heard the, um, some people, some of the members or something, it better be some cushion in them seats when I, when I go to church. The, the, the choir, the worship group better sing good today. The temperature better be feel good today because it's hot outside and, and or it's cold outside. They better have the right temperature. The, the preacher, he or she better preach what I want them to preach. Comfort zone. Now, if you read Revelation 3.16, it say, so because you are lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. God would rather you be hot or cold than me look more. At least you something when you're hot and cold. But when you look warm, you're just in your comfort zone. You're just going through the motions. And God do not want his church to be in, in, be in the motion. God want his church to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And how we just became the stepping stone of the world. If you read, uh, if you go uh, get a chance, read Matthew 4, verse 1 through 11. And at this time, Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days, 40 nights, and he was just praying. And this man was tired when he was done. He was tired, he was weak, and he was hungry. And, and how Satan said, this is my time to get him. 
He's, he, he's, he's not in his right mind. He's, he's vulnerable. He's weak. So Satan said, look, 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 let me talk to you, Jesus. Look, come over here. Let me talk to you. I got something to, I got something to I'll tell you. Now, you see this stone right here? And Jesus is like, yeah, I see the stone. Turn it, turn the bread. You, you, you the man? You, you, you Jesus. You, we, we know who you are. And, and Jesus is like, no, no, no. And he's like, oh, I got another, I got another best, another one. Let's, let's go to the, I'm going to take you to the highest point. And, and, and I want you to jump down and command your angels to, to catch you. Because you're Jesus, they're going to do it. And Jesus was like, no, no. Wait a minute. One last one. You see this world out here? It all belongs to me. This world belongs to me. If you bow down and worship me, I, I'll let you have this world. You, you control this. And Jesus was like, no. See, while Jesus was in that mindset, Jesus could have easily entered his comfort zone. He could have been like, he could have been like Esau, I need to eat today. I know what I'm supposed to be doing, what I came here to do, but today I'm hungry. Give me something to eat. I need to enter my comfort zone because I'm, I don't want to do what I'm sent here to do anyway. Give me something to eat. But I'm thankful that Jesus told Satan, get away from me. I was sent here to do something. Jesus could have easily entered his comfort zone and said no, but he didn't. I can definitely relate to this, this topic. Um, how giving in to, to your comfort zone uh, I mean, just how many times did I just gave in and didn't fight? And the problem is when you give in, it doesn't just sometimes just, just affect you. Sometimes it can affect your family member. Sometimes it can affect your friends. Who, who, it can sometimes even affect the church just by giving in your comfort zone. Just like King Saul and the Israel soldiers, how they accepted their comfort zone fear. They just said, I'd rather live than go out there and fight Goliath. One thing I'm happy about is King David, his reaction. See, King David was sitting there watching everything. And, and it, it was like a movie. He was you know, sitting there watching the screen. And, and he could see all this stuff unfold in front of him. And, and he, he watched Goliath step out. Then he sat there and watched the Israel soldiers run from him. And, and, and then while they was in camp, he was sitting there listening what the, uh, Israel, the Israelite soldiers were saying. He can see this and hear this. And King David was like, I can't believe this. We Israel, and y'all letting this man, Goliath, to defy Israel. Y'all letting this man to defy God. What is wrong with y'all? <laughs> King David was like, you know what? I'll fight him. And, and, and he went to Saul like, I, I will fight Goliath. Now, you have to remember King David's brothers. How they told King David, look, this is grown folks' business. Take your little butt home and go home. <laughs> tell your dad, tell dad, we okay. It's all good, we still alive. King David was like, no, I can't believe this. Y'all allowing this man to do this to us. One man, King, King David was like, I still fight him. How, how King David picked up the, the five rocks, took his slingshot, and what did King David do? He ran to the battle. The Israelite soldiers, ran away from it. King David put, put on his running shoes and he ran to him. And what did Goliath do? He was like, what is this? Y'all seeing this little boy out here to do a man's job? He, he ain't nothing but a dog to me, look at him. And, 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 and King David, King David could have easily took his ball Y'all remember the back days, whoever, one person had the, had the football or basketball back in the days, and somebody messed with him, like, I'm going to take my ball and go home. He could have easily took his ball and went home. King, this is what King David said to him. 
You come at me with, with swords and spears, but I come at you with the name of the Lord. How do you know that? You have to remember, King David fought bears. He fought lions to keep them from eating the sheep. And one thing King David understood, and he remembered that the other soldiers didn't remember, God was with him. On the whole step, he understood God was going to be with me. How do you know? Because he told him, I'm going to come at you with the name of the Lord. And how King David took, took the, got the rock and put it in, in, in his slingshot, and he, he spurred, swinged it around. And he let one end loose, and pow, the rock hit Goliath. Goliath falls down, and then King David kills him. King David could have easily took his ball and went home. King David was a, was a young man fighting a man, a nine foot, to, ten foot man. King David could have could easily enter his comfort zone and say, I would rather live today <laughs> than be the king tomorrow. It's time to kill that giant called comfort. If you are in the comfort zone, it's time to kill that, com that giant called comfort. How do you do that? The first thing you have to do, you have to admit to yourself. You have to come to your senses and say, I have a problem. Mm -hmm. Then when you do that, then you have to confess that you have a problem. You, you say it to yourself, and then you go to somebody else. Then you, you join a local church. Then you join a local church, then you got to read your Bible. Then you got to pray. But one thing you have to remember uh, 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 it's very important in the situation. Yes, you got to read your Bible. Yes, you got to pray. Yes, you got to go to church and things like that. But you can't do this alone. You need somebody to help you through this process. Two is always better than one. I remember Jesus, his, 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 uh, uh, getting close to his, his last hour and how he took some of the disciples with him to pray. And, and how Jesus was on his knees and he was praying and, and the sweat was dripping like blood. And he went back. See, the disciples were supposed to be praying. And he went back and he saw the disciples sleeping. And Jesus was like, what are you doing? You, you're supposed to be praying. Do you understand what I'm going through right now? Do you understand what's going to happen to me? Do you understand the pain and suffering that I'm feeling right now? Are you sitting there sleeping? Even Jesus needed somebody, especially what he's, what he's about to go through. Now, I'm going I'm to end it on this one, and I'm going to tell you a story. There was this man who was lame. Um, he, uh, he was lame, and he, and, and he uh, laid there for 39 years. And and uh, and um, he was by this pool, and and when an angel would come and touch the pool, it would stir up the water, and whoever got in this water was healed. And this man laid there for thirty nine years, sitting there, thirty nine years. And and when Jesus came and he saw the man. He said, um, he asked the man. He's like. Do you want to get well? And, and, and the man said, yeah, yes, 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 I want to get well, but I have a problem. Nobody won't help me into the pool. Every time the, the, the angel would come and, and it was time to me get in the pool, nobody won't pick me up and take me to the pool. See, the man had a problem. He had a lazy problem. His comfort zone was la being lazy. See, see, he would rather stay there 
and to be healed. 39 years. 39 times an angel would come and touch the pool and he was just still lay there. Don't you think he, he, because he, his legs were working, but you think he would take his arms and scoot closer and closer to the pool and lay there on the side and as soon as the angel come and he would fall right in? Don't, don't you think he would do that? But no, he just sat there and laid and laid. Can you, can you imagine how dirty that area was? The, what he was, the filth he was living in? 39 years, and I'm 42. <laughs> he lived there for 39 years, and this is how merciful our God is. Jesus told him, get up, and what did the man do? He jumped up, and Jesus said, matter of fact, why you up? Clean this mess up. Don't you leave it like this. Because see, when you finally get up, you got to clean your mess up. Because you don't want to fall right back into your mess. You don't want to fall right back into your comfort zone. You got to clean it up. Just don't leave it there. Because if you leave it there, it's so easy to step right back into it. Because it's your comfort zone. And you understand your comfort zone. Church, it's, it's time to kill that, that giant. It's, 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 so e it's so easy to fall in, but it's so hard to get out. And remember, you can't do this alone. And uh, I, I just, uh, just want to thank y'all for listening to me. And sorry, and I know it's short, but I just want to thank y'all. Uh, I'm going to say a prayer to end it out. God, I uh, just want to thank you for today and thank you for this morning and uh, thank you for this church uh, for allowing me to preach and um, uh, just I hope they just get something out of the word when they go home and, and, and realize their comfort zone is stopping them from being who they're supposed to be. Um, just if some people, you know, just uh, if you're in the comfort zone, just uh, uh, it's, it's time to, uh, you know, just volunteer for something at the church and, and help out where, where it's needed. And, and, and if, you, if we, we got a worship group, we got uh, children ministry, God, just help and just open up their hearts and, and, and minds, just like you did me, God. And I just thank you. And just, uh, just, just thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.